What is going on, Minties? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. Join me as I do a comprehensive reading order of Batgirl. So, please stay tuned. Okay. Now, I swear, I use Infinite Crisis on just about every one of these reading orders. Uh, I may just tell you where to plug it in. But anyway, um, before I get started, I do want to thank our patrons. They're the ones that voted for this. Every month I have a poll on our Patreon and then our patrons vote on which reading order to do next. Uh, for example, they're just now voting on the month of December. But anyway, for the month of November, it was Batgirl that won. And we're going to kick it off with Batgirl Year One. We're going to take a look at each one of these and make this quick and easy. Now we're going to kick off the this reading order with year one. This is Batgirl year one. This is available in deluxe hardcover. It's also available with a Robin year one, like a two for one trade paperback. It's been available in this trade paperback. It's had plenty of reprints. It is a wonderful book. It is written by Scott Beatty and Chuck Dixon and introduced me at least to this wonderful artist, Marcos Martin. It takes place during the first year of Barbara Gordon as Batgirl. Now keep in mind, that all my comprehensive reading orders take place after Crisis on Infinite Earths. So you won't see things here from the Silver Age or Golden Age. I'm sorry. Uh, that's just not my cup of tea. But I've explained it a few times. But I figured um, it would be okay to go over that again. And why I don't start with Golden Age stuff or Bronze Age uh, Batgirl. Because that omnibus is available. But this was written during the time that Chuck Dixon was writing Nightwing. He was writing Robin. He was writing Birds of Prey. And he wanted to do a flashback issue, and I think it's wonderful because this, to me, to this day, is still probably in my top three favorite Barbara Gordon stories. Because you never got to see, or at least I never really got to see her as Batgirl, because by the time I started reading it, she got shot by the Joker, became Oracle, and... Oh, as a matter of fact, I'm not going to be talking about Oracle or Birds of Prey. I am strictly, uh, strictly sticking with Batgirl. So this collects all nine issues of that wonderful series. If you have not read it, do yourself a favor and check it out. Next up, we have Cassandra Kane as Batgirl, Volume 1. Now, Cassandra Kane was a character that appeared during the crossover called No Man's Land. And this particular volume collects the first 12 issues of her ongoing series. Now... <laughs> This is really difficult to talk about because there's going to be some spoilers. I hate throwing spoilers in there, but... Okay, you know what? I'm not going to talk about... Uh, I'll focus on the artwork so you can see for yourself. Uh, most of this stuff in here and the next few volumes are drawn by Damian Scott. And they're all written by Kelly Puckett. And so Cassandra Kane is the daughter of this assassin uh, who is trying to make it in Gotham... Uh, under the wing of Oracle, the original Batgirl, Barbara Gordon, and become the new Batgirl for Gotham City. And it's wonderful. And man, it just, it's so early, early 2000, early odds. And the art style has this wonderful anime like to it. I love it. And there's her dad, Kane. Now, and here we have volume two, To the Death. This collects Batgirl 13 through 25. Now, issue 24 is also collected in the Bruce Wayne murderer storyline that ran through the uh, Bat family. It was a crossover event. Uh, so this has the return of Lady Shiva, and she returns to challenge Cassandra, uh, Nova, uh, Cassandra Kane. I always want to call her Cassandra Nova. She has such a cool name. Cassandra to a rematch. Uh, this is still the amazing Damien Scott. Like I said, he kind of reminds me of Humberto Ramos, anime-ish. Steven Scrooge, if you all remember him, and Michael Golden. Like a good little mix of that. Again, this collects issues 13 to 25. It has guest appearances by the spoiler. Uh, Stephanie, who we'll talk about actually in a little bit. But there's my girl, Lady Shiva. Now, let's look at the third, and until further notice, hiatus volume of Batgirl. This is volume three, Point Blank. Uh, Point Blank collects issues 26 through 37. And Batgirl issues 29 and 33 are also collected in Batman Wayne, or no, Batman Bruce Wayne Fugitive. So keep that in mind, which is a follow-up to The Murderer. There is, again, amazing artwork by Damian Scott, and he's also joined by... Giuseppe Camancoli on here. You got guest appearances again by the spoiler and Nightwing. Uh, now we get to see a more human side to Cassie during this run. 
uh, because she becomes more vulnerable. Because to me, she is my favorite Batgirl. I don't. Oh, we even get uh, Green Arrow and Robin in here. To me, she is my favorite Batgirl. She is amazing. Uh, she was everything that I thought. I love Barbara Gordon. She's one of my favorite characters as Oracle. But as far as Batgirl, she was a badass, kicking ass machine. A badass, kicking ass machine. Does that even make any sense? Like, she, her language was violence. And for th the Bruce to take her under his wing and put her with Barbara Gordon to try to, to just deconstruct her from everything that she was trained since she was a baby was just such an amazing ride. So she's almost like this unstoppable killing machine at the beginning. And then towards this, we get to see this human side of her. And I thought that was really cool. Again, she is my favorite Batgirl. So leave those comments down below as to who your favorite Batgirl is. Now, if you've seen my comprehensive reading orders, you know I like sneaking in books that are not in the main shot because I know some people just take a screenshot of all those books lined up together. So I like to sneak books in. So this is that time. Uh, this is War Games book one and it collects issue 53 of Batgirl along with the rest of the Bat family like Azrael and Nightwing, Batman, Detective Comics. It's a huge crossover event and you will also need book two because book one collects Batgirl 53, book two collects Batgirl 56 and 57. There are a lot of horrible things that happen in here to a lot of the characters but the ramifications will last for years. Well, you know, until Flashpoint or whatever. But anyway, these are the two books you will need in addition to the other Batgirl books. Sadly, there was no more of these. Uh, this is where DC decided to stop with Volume 3 with Issue 37, which takes us to Robin Batgirl, Fresh Blood, collecting Robin 132 and 133 and Batgirl one, or 58 and 59. So there's a huge lot of orphaned issues here. Uh, anywhere from issues 38 all the way to 30 or 57 are missing. So two more of those fat trades would have done. Damien Scott on artwork. Oh my gosh. And actually this has um, Alejandro Garcia or Alex Garza's artwork too on here. It's beautiful. The paper quality is kind of crappy because this is an older trade. But this is a crossover event uh, with Robin. Uh, Bill Willingham is the writer. He's He went on to do um, oh Fables and other works but anyway this is a really cool crossover because nightwing is no longer in bloodhaven due to some events that i can't spoil so they leave batgirl and robin in charge of bloodhaven next up we have batgirl kicking assassins collecting issues of batgirl 60 through 64 uh this is an old crappy trade paperback now we have pop mon man on artwork as well as ali garza and all of this is now written by Anderson Gabridge. So Cassandra Cain be begins to build a new life here in Bloodhaven, but the Penguin is looming at large. Um, actually, I can't flip too much through there because that spoils something that happens with... Spoiler! Ironic, huh? Um, but yeah, so now Batgirl has to keep the streets of Bloodhaven safe. Taking us to the next and final, sadly, uh, Cassandra Kane as Batgirl trade paperback. This is Destruction's Daughter, uh, collecting issues 65 through 73. Again, Anderson uh, Gabridge is writing it, Pop Man on artwork, Alejandro Garza. And this particular storyline, um, Cassandra Batgirl, is reunited with her father, David Kane. That's the guy I was talking about. He was the assassin, he was the one that trained her to be an assassin. And in the storyline, she tries to find out who her mother is, or was, rather, because she thinks her mother's dead. And her quest for truth brings her face-to-face -face again with Lady Shiva and Nisa. Now, I can't um, spoil who Nisa is, but she does have ties to Reja Ghoul. So, issue 73, by the way, is the final issue, and that takes us to Infinite Crisis, the big crossover event where everything changes including canceling Batgirl. Sad. Oh, God, I hated that. But, you know, whatever, Cassandra Cain is still Batgirl, sort of, during this time. She joined the Teen Titans East, which is written by Jeff Johns and co-written by Adam Beechin. Jimmy Califiore is the artist on this miniseries. This is called 
Batgirl Redemption, and it collects the miniseries from 2005 uh, to 2006, uh, all six issues of that. And like I said, she's not really herself during the Teen Titans East. As a matter of fact, the ironic part of the name Redemption probably has a lot to do with Adam Beechin because a lot of fans were upset with his treatment of Cassandra Cain. Um, so pretty much is, I guess fans just got tired of his crap and he went and kind of wrote a redemption arc for himself and Cassandra. Uh, she is on a mission for revenge and she's trying to track down her father, David Kane, to make him pay for raising her to, uh, to be an assassin. That's pretty much the plot of this. And it kind of retcons why she's acting a certain way during the Jeff Johns Teen Titans run with Titans East. Okay. Now we get the Stephanie Brown ears. This is Batgirl, uh, Batgirl Rising. By the way, I have these in three trade paperbacks. These are also available in a more complete collection, by the way, in uh, two, tr two thick trades that DC released um, last year and at the beginning of this year. So if you're going to go and get them, try to find those instead of this three, which I need to go ahead and update. Uh, now, the stories in here are written by Brian Glass and features the character of Stephanie Brown, who used to be, spoiler, as the new Batgirl. I'm not going to tell you why she's the new Batgirl, but things have changed in the Bat family. Uh, this all takes events, all these events actually take place right after the Batman Rest in Peace storyline, so that's why it's called Batman Reborn. Now, Volume 1 has the first seven issues, and all of this is drawn by Lee Garbett, Garbett sorry, and Trevor Scott. Next, we have The Flood. Again, Lee Garbett, uh, Brian Glass on writing duties. Uh, this collects issues 9 through 14, so skipping issue 8 already. These beautiful covers, by the way. Um, and this is the fight with uh, Stephanie and The Calculator. Leading us to the third and final volume of Batgirl, the Stephanie Brown years. Um, by the way, I'm just trying to move uh, a little faster. So I do love this run, like I, but like I said, Cassandra Kane is my Batgirl. Even though Stephanie Brown finally got the respect that she was due with this series. Uh, so this is volume three. Uh, now Dustin Wynn joins Brian Glass on art. And Brian Glass is still writing, collecting issues 15 through 24 of Batgirl, the Stephanie Brown years. This one's called The Lesson. So there, I think this is one that has the computer nerd that gets murdered at the beginning. He goes through Gotham University. And yeah, she's trying to figure out the who killed him using her detective skills that she has been taught by Oracle. So what happened to Stephanie Brown? Well, Flashpoint happened to Stephanie Brown, where the entire DC Universe, again, was revamped, rebooted, taking us to this run right here, the New 52 Batgirl. Gail Simone, who has been writing Birds of Prey up until now, is now joined by Ardian Saif on art. Then you got Adam Hughes on the covers, by the way. Uh, she is now writing Batgirl for the first time. She's not just writing Barbara Gordon as Oracle. So, so this collects the first six issues of the New 52 run of Batgirl. It's a brand new universe. Why is Barbara Gordon not in a wheelchair, you say? Well, because that was retconned um, towards... Actually, that's explained in Volume 3, I think, of this. But we'll get to that here in a second. But this is Volume 1. Here is Volume 2. Again, Gail Simone writing... Ardian Saif, uh, there's Batwoman, a character that was introduced in the 52 pickup, uh, which is the series right after Infinite Crisis. And so this features issues 7 through 13, as well as issue 0. And it starts off with the issue 0 with the origins of Batgirl. And it does it in a fashion that doesn't shove the whole killing joke in your face, so it's a little bit different. Uh, and then the Court of Owls also appear in here, which was the ongoing villain towards the pages of the Scott Snyder Batman. Here we have Batgirl, Death of the Family, a take on death in the family. Uh, so including issues 14 through 19 of the Batgirl series. Uh, Ray Fox now joins Gail Simone on writing duties and also has the annual in the story from the DC Young Romance special. And Batman 17 because... 
all these death of the family features this issue right here the big click cliffhanger issue and it also features uh, Batman of course Robin Nightwing uh, Red Hood and uh, the new Robin Damien Batgirl Wanted this is volume four uh, Gail Simone is joined by Marjorie Bennett there, there she is and Fernando Pasarin is the main artist on this why is Batgirl Wanted well you gotta read this to find out. So this collects issues 20 through 26 of Batgirl the New 52 and Batman Dark Knight 23.1 The Ventriloquist. So this moment shows us Barbara Gordon at her darkest hour. Of course, that is all before the dawn. And that's before she summons her inner Batgirl to start kicking some ass to the criminal underworld of Gotham City. Uh, this, I don't know. I think it started losing steam for me there. Which takes us to the final volume of the Gail Simone run of Batgirl. And that is Deadline. Again, Gail Simone is joined by Marjorie Bennett. And this uh, collects issues 27 through 34. Oh, and then uh, Batgirl Annual 2. That's the one that I forgot. And The Future's End, issue number one. So, I think Gail Simone was just trying to wrap up all the loose ends from the last two uh, volumes that she had, mainly from Wanted. Even though it doesn't have a cohesive story along each of the issues, each one is strong and adds to the character. And, however, some of this stuff feels a little rushed because I don't know if she was told that she was going to be leaving the book at the last minute, or if she's just trying to wrap up loose ends. There are some variant covers always in the back. But things are about to change for Batgirl. Again. Here is Batgirl. Batgirl of Burnside. This is where things get a little confusing. Because again the numbering system. This is volume 5. But believe me you want to read this. Because remember this has issue 34. This has issues 35 through 40. And a story from Secret Origin number 10. Uh, this is Brandon Fletcher and Cameron Stewart joined by Bab Stars, and it just revamps. It's not a reboot of Batgirl, but it just revamps the story uh, like a lot. So the volume begins with a fire that destroys Dinah Lance's, that's Black Canary's, uh, home, and then of course Batgirl's gear is in there. So she has to have a new costume. So she and she's also forced to start over. She's moved to an area of Gotham, uh, and that's named Burnside, hence the name, and which is a trendy spot for students and young people to live. And she wants to recreate the character of Batgirl. And here is volume two. Uh, this is Family Business, collecting Batgirl uh, 41 through 45, DC Sneak Pick Batgirl 1, and Annual Number 3. Uh, this has issues that coincide with the Scott Snyder run with what's going on with Commissioner Gordon what's going on with Bruce Wayne what's going on with Batman over there and so there were changes made to that title that affect here such as who is now under the cow because there's a new Batman and let's see there's a new vigilante policy in Gotham as well so most of the artwork here is done by Bab Star again and some of it is done by Ben Gow, who I freaking love his artwork so as far as the story i will say and it's bengal story here i will say that it took a lot for me to get used to i can see as a brand new reader why a lot of people really like this i'm sure my daughter she hasn't read this yet but she's 10 years old i'm sure she was gonna love this run but for me they changed the character so dramatically i wasn't even in with the idea of bringing back barbara gordon as batgirl so that took me a while to get used to, and luckily they put somebody that was a great writer on the book. But this was just such a change that at first I was like, nah, no thank you, not for me. But I wanted to see what it was all about because it did get a huge fan following. So much so that it almost got an omnibus, and sadly I say om almost because it got canceled. So this is Volume 3, Minefields. This collects issues 46 through 52. Uh, so Barbara's distressed here by her increasing forgetfulness and by these nightmares that she keeps having over and over. 
And coincidentally, during this time, kind of, kind of reminds me of the Riverdale or like uh, Buffy, the Vampire Slayer plot. Uh, coincidentally, during this time, an old friend of hers named Greg arrives in town. But it has some pretty cool cameos. You get, you do get Nightwing in this again, and everything is about to get rebooted again. But this doesn't get a hard reboot, unlike between Flashpoint and New 52 Batgirl. Now we have Rebirth, the event that rebooted most of the DC Universe and brought Wally West back only so he could be taken down in <laughs> Heroes in Crisis. Whatever. So with that Rebirth event, we get a brand new team working on Batgirl. Uh, this is Volume 1, Batgirl of Rebirth. So this is what it looks like here. Uh, keep in mind that they start taking away the Rebirth logo from the top towards issue or volume four uh volume one collecting one through six of batgirl now written by hope larson drawn by Raphael albuquerque and they pretty much take batgirl out of burnside and into a whole new adventure uh beyond burnside takes place before the birds of prey series so i'm going to talk about that next here in a second and it follows barbara gordon's journey across the world to fight crime learn new skills and just find herself uh, honestly, I prefer the Burnside stuff myself, and this was okay. It was a lot different, uh, but I'll keep going. So, the volumes of Batgirl and Birds of Prey that they talk about in here are collected in these three trade paperbacks. There were 22 issues of this, and Julie and sister Julie and Shauna Benson are the writers of this main book. Claire Rowe is the artist uh, with Rogue Antonio. But there are only three volumes, and then the series got canceled. And it can be found in these three trade paperbacks, all 22 issues. Now let's take it back to Rebirth. This is volume two, again, Hope Larson. Uh, this is Son of the Penguin. Uh, collecting issues seven through 11 and Batgirl annual number one. Now Hope Larson, I've never read anything by her. I know she's an author, but uh, I haven't read anything by her. Chris... Uh, Wild Goose, he's the artist on um, Gotham Academy, which was a great book. Anyway, so this is the story of Penguin's son, and he doesn't look anything like Penguin. He's kind of hot. So, you figure out where this goes. Volume 3, finally the book that won me back. I'm like, okay, this is actually a pretty good run. Uh, Hope Larson again, and now she is joined by all these different artists. So this, this is Summer of Lies, collecting issues 12 through 17. And it takes us back to the beginning of Batgirl's presence in Gotham. And when she first met Dick Grayson. That's right. My favorite DC character. So it also has a flashback to a tragedy that happened to her a long time ago. And it keeps coming back uh, along with a friend. Now, along with a Dick Grayson, Nightwing, you also have guest stars of Catwoman and the Batvillain, the Mad Hatter. Taking us to Batgirl Volume 4 Strange Loop. Collecting issues 18 through 23. Now this one's filled with small little stories for the most part. Uh, it's probably not my favorite collection out of the Hope Larson run. Because it's made up of 7 little short stories. Which really don't have that much depth. Because you really don't have that much time to do much character development with uh, you know 7 short stories. But there is a pretty cool little story here and well there's a few guest stars too of course um where we kind of get deep into the mind of barbara gordon and what makes her tick now this is hope larson's final book uh there is a volume five it's called the art of crimes and that has issues 26 through 29 and annual number tw uh, two as well as stories from batgirl number 25 because that hasn't been collected as a whole yet and Here's a quick word from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. 
And that was it. That was my comprehensive reading order. Let me know in the comments down below what you would have added and what you would have taken away, what counts, what you enjoyed, what what books you haven't read that you want to read now. I love to read those kind of comments and reply back. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. Now, remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.